Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to review the Opera browser version 45. So Opera is a browser that I have not touched on too much uh, in previous years, I just didn't like the feel of it beforehand. But I've got to say, after having tried Opera out today, uh, I do feel that the newest version of the browser is actually quite strong, and I'd like to show some of the key features here in this review today in order to show off what it can do. So here you can see the benchmark test I ran for the Opera browser earlier today. Now, uh, this uh, value, the score, is measured against my computer. So it's really only relevant what this number is against the other browsers. And in terms of speed, it's faster than Edge and Firefox, but it was just slightly slower than Chrome. However, I don't think that's an issue at all. In actual practice, being able to load up the web pages, uh, today it's been quite nice in it being able to do that. And once again, it only scored a little bit slower than Chrome, which is considered the fast web browser out there. So Opera is actually pretty optimized. So if we look at the sidebar over here on the left, there's a feature called Speed Dial, which is one of the things they've had in Opera for a very long time. Now when we open up the Speed Dial, you'll notice it's very similar to the new tab pages you have out of Firefox or Chrome. And you would be right in a lot of ways. Uh, you have the ability to uh, search the web here, defaults to Google, but that is changeable. Um, you have a bunch of default uh, sites that they basically kind of suggest for you out of the box, but anything you want to put here as a permanent site, for instance, uh, I play Hearthstone a lot, so I might go to hearthbone.com, I can drag that in there, and then that's kind of permanently saved as a site which we can quickly access through speed dial. Now, whether you prefer having recommendations for the sites you visited the most, or if you just want to glue some to the screen here, of course it is possible to also glue them to the screen in Firefox or Chrome, but it doesn't do that out of the box, it doesn't do that manually, and it definitely does not dedicate an entire section for it uh, by default. But aside from that, on this new tab page, you'll notice that there's a background to it, and we can easily customize that by hitting Customize Start Page over here on the top right, where they have many different wallpapers you can choose from by default, and you can switch to a new one uh, very simply. It's just clicking there, it goes ahead, downloads the full wallpaper, and assigns it as your background here. But the difference here is that in Opera, it's incredibly easy to do it. You can uh, change it right there on the front page of the speed dial. Also, the ability to enable a dark theme here, you can see I've already gone ahead and done that, because when it comes to software, I prefer to have a dark theme to my windows. I think it's just easier to look at. Uh, and the fact that you can actually do that out of the box in Opera is really, really cool for me. Uh, we can actually put it back to the white uh, classic theme so that you can kind of see and compare, but dark theme, that's definitely me. And then in the sidebar itself, that's everything you see over here on the left, which is laid out differently than other web browsers, I might add. So this sidebar, instead of it being uh, kind of at the top horizontally, it's vertically along the left-hand side of the screen. And that's not a bad layout or anything like that, but it does take me a minute to warm up to that because I'm just so used to things being at the top of the screen. But on this sidebar, you, see, you can see here you can customize it with uh, different applications, but out of the box they put Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp on there. So for people who like using social media, especially like Facebook, and want to be talking to their friends while they're browsing, but maybe not necessarily actually have the Facebook web page open, having these features built in makes it really easy to connect to those services and talk to your friends while you're browsing the web. So if you didn't have Facebook open, you would normally download like the Facebook Messenger app uh, to your desktop for that. And that would be fine. You can do it that way. It's just like using Skype. But I think that having these features integrated into the browser right off the bat without even needing to go ahead and install an extension is actually really cool. And yeah, some people aren't going to want to use Facebook or WhatsApp. And for those people, you can easily just go here and toggle them off. And you can add some other things instead. If you want downloads to be there permanently, I probably do. I can just leave that checked. Maybe add Facebook Messenger back then. So it's a really handy and customizable bar. So following that up, I want to talk about some of the other things on the bar. Bookmarks uh, pretty much work the same kind of way as you would in other browsers. You have a bookmarks bar that you can enable or disable. So bookmarks that go here are going to show up on the bar. Um, you can, of course, bookmark any site to your uh, speed dial. 
Um, and you can just have general bookmark folders here that may or may not show up on the bar. And if we want to enable the bookmarks bar, we just check this up here in the top right. Uh, probably something I will leave checked going forward. Which brings us to the personal news. So this is a really cool feature for me. Effectively, it's having an RSS reader integrated straight into the browser. So you kind of see how Opera integrates these features, which are really useful. And normally you would add a add-on or a plugin or extension, whatever you want to call it, to your browser in order to get that same features. But in Opera, a lot of those really useful common ones are out of the box. And being able to add uh, podcast RSS feeds, you can see here I tested it with Free Domain Radio, Stefan Molyneux, cool podcast. Um, you can basically add in anything that has a feed right into that, have it be my sources, keep up with your latest podcasts or news articles or whatever you want. And you can also see the top 50, of course, uh, basically what's trending in the latest headlines. Uh, but having that as a sidebar thing, you can just click at any time. It's really cool, and I love the ability to add in my RSS feeds. I normally use an additional plugin for that, uh, or something like Feedly.com. Uh, but having it there is nice. It's really nice. And, of course, you can get extensions for Opera. You can see I've already gone ahead and installed LastPass. Uh, because that's my password manager, I consider that an absolute necessity. Really, when it comes to extensions, though, because the best extensions just get made for all the major browsers, uh, you're probably not going to go wrong with using Opera over Chrome. It's not like your favorites are going to be missing there. It's possible, um, but I've seen ad blockers there. I've seen LastPass, uh, password managers, other kinds of things. There's so many of the features are actually built into um, Opera that I might not even need more extensions beyond this, to be honest. So another really cool out-of-the-box feature for Opera is, in fact, their ad blocker. You can see up here that uh, we have ads blocking, and this is built into Opera. You can see Opera blocks ads. If you click this button, it uh, basically takes you to the settings page, and you can enable ad blocking. Uh, okay, it's actually up there at the top. And it uses a couple lists to block ads uh, off of the web. Of course, you can customize those lists as well by the looks of it if you want to choose some other ones. Or maybe you only want to block ads that are really malicious and you want to keep the other ads going you know, so that you know people can get ad revenue as long as they're not being too annoying about it. And yes, you can get an ad blocker in any browser. But having it built into Opera, that's just really cool. It saves you time. You don't need to set it up. You don't need to worry about it having some compatibility issues because it's developed by the Opera team themselves. So next up, a few miscellaneous things I want to add in about Opera and its functionality. Uh, if you want to open PDFs, you can have Opera open PDF files in your default PDF application of choice. So if you're using... Adobe Reader or Foxit Reader or something like that. You can have uh, Opera just automatically open those applications up in order to use uh, your PDF files. It's got a battery saver mode to help you save some electricity when you have your device unplugged or if you just want to save electricity in general. And further up in the browser tab of the settings, we can see that in Opera, there's actually an option on text selection convert currency to US dollars or any currency you want in the world. So if you happen to be shopping on a site that does not use US dollars or whatever your local currency is, it'll be nice to have it easily convertible into the currency you're used to so you know exactly how much something's costing. The last two things I want to point out is that in Opera browser, as you might assume, uh, Opera has its own Opera accounts, and whenever you want to synchronize data between your devices or between your computers, you log into your Opera account, which may mean you would need to register one. Um, and then all of your bookmarks, all of your data, that gets synchronized, same as any other browser, but that's something that you just expect in modern-day computing. And then finally, Opera has something called Opera Turbo Mode down here in the Settings menu. And so what Opera Turbo Mode does is as you load up websites that have images or even video content, it's going to shrink the size or compress it as it sends it to you so that your device takes up less data as you're browsing around the web. So that'll be really important 
if you happen to be on a limited data plan, um, but kind of useful in general because the less data you have to load on a web page, the quicker it's going to actually load. So that's going to be it for today's review of the Opera web browser. This is, of course, on Windows 10 desktop. I have been really impressed with what I've been seeing, and there is a solid chance I just moved to Opera altogether, uh, basically putting Firefox and Chrome in the back burner for now. I didn't used to think Opera was that great, but having seen the latest version, there's a lot of really cool features, and there's a definite edge in certain areas over those other web browsers. Plus, it's almost as fast as Chrome, so no complaints there as well. So with that, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this review on Opera version 45 in 2017, and hopefully I will see you guys in my future video content.